sixth grade, module one, lesson seven, classwork. Example one, which of the following correctly models that the number of red gumballs is five thirds the number of white gumballs? So here we're gonna start seeing ratios represented as fractions. So five thirds is the same as saying five to three or five to three. So we're just looking for five red gumballs for every three white gumballs. So the one that shows that, that has five red and three white, is B. Example two, the duration of two films are modeled below. Film A is one, two, three, four, five. Film B is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it looks like the ratio is five to seven. So A says the ratio of the length of film A to the length of film B is five to seven. So the length of film A is, if we wanted to represent it as a fraction, would be five sevenths of the length of film B. The length of film B to the length of film A, so now we have film B first, would be seven fifths of film A. Exercise one. Sammy and Caden went fishing using live shrimp as bait. Sammy brought eight more shrimp than Caden bought. When they combined their shrimp, they had 32 shrimp all together. How many shrimp did each boy bring? Let's um, do it. This looks like a good problem for a tape diagram. So let's do Sammy and Caden. So Sammy brought eight more shrimp than Caden. So Caden is just that much. Sammy is that much plus eight more. And all together, they had 32. So the entire thing is 32. So I'm gonna take 30, I'm gonna take eight off of 32, and we'll have 24. So then the 24 is split equally between these two portions. They are the same. So 24 split into two equal groups is 12. So this piece is 12, and that piece is 12 which means that Sammy, 12 plus eight, brought 20 and Caden brought 12. So Sammy equals 20 and Caden equals 12. What is the ratio of the number of shrimp Sammy brought to the number of shrimp Caden bought? So Sammy is first, it wants to know. So Sammy was 20 to Caden was 12, or you could say 20 to 12. Express the number of shrimp Sammy brought as a fraction to the number of shrimp Caden brought. So now we're just gonna write it as a fraction. It would be 20 over 12. D, what is the ratio of the number of shrimp Sammy brought to the total number of shrimp? So Sammy, remember, brought 20. So we have 20 to the total number that they brought. They Together they had 32. So 20 to 32 is the ratio. What fraction of the total shrimp did Sammy bring? So if we want to write it as a fraction, Sammy brought 20 out of 32. Exercise two. A food company that produces peanut butter decides to try out a new version of its peanut butter that is extra crunchy using twice the number of peanut chunks as normal. The company hosts a sampling of its new product at grocery stores and finds that five out of every nine customers prefer the new extra crunchy version. A, let's make a list of ratios that might be relevant for this situation. One, the ratio of the number preferring new extra crunchy to the total number. So that was five preferred extra crunchy out of nine. So that ratio would be five to nine. The ratio of number preferring regular crunchy to the total number. So if five preferred extra crunchy out of nine, that means that there were four left out of nine who preferred the regular kind. Three, the ratio of the number preferring regular crunchy to, prefer, to the number preferring extra crunchy. So now we're just comparing regular crunchy, which was four, to extra crunchy, which was five. And the ratio of number preferring new extra crunchy, so that's five, 
to the number preferring regular crunchy. That was four. You could also, instead of putting colons in between, you could just write the, you could write two, the word two. B, let's use the value of each ratio to make multiplica multiplicative comparisons for each of the ratios we described here. So, these are just gonna, they're, they're still ratios, but we're gonna write them as fractions. The number preferring new extra crunchy is what fraction of the total number? So new extra crunchy was five out of a total of nine people surveyed. The number preferring regular crunchy was four out of the total number surveyed was nine. The number preferring regular crunchy was four out of those preferring new extra crunchy was five. And the number preferring new extra crunchy was five of those preferring regular crunchy was four. C. If the company is planning to produce 90,000 containers of crunchy peanut butter, how many of those containers should be the new extra crunchy variety? And how many of those containers should be the regular crunchy peanut butter? What would be helpful in solving this problem? Does one of our comparison statements above help us? So we can use any of the fractions above. I'm going to link this to a tape diagram because that's what we're used to seeing. So I'm going to do extra crunchy and regular. So extra to regular was 5 to 4. And it's saying the company is planning to produce 90,000 containers of crunchy peanut butter. How many should be a new, new extra crunchy variety? So all of it, they're producing 90,000. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces. So if we do 90,000 divided by nine, we will get 10,000. So there's 10,000 in each piece here. In all of those, all those parts. We want to know how many should be regular crunchy peanut butter and how many should be extra crunchy. So extra crunchy would be 10,000 times five pieces, or 50,000. Regular would be 10,000 times four, which is 40,000. Try these next scenarios. If the company decides to produce 2,000 containers of regular crunchy peanut butter, how many containers of new extra crunchy peanut butter would it produce? So we could do the same that we did above, and make tape diagrams, but I'm gonna simplify it a little bit and make it go a little faster and start using equivalent fractions because ratios are what we learned in previous lessons. They are also equivalent fractions to find ones that are equivalent ratios. So if the company decides to produce 2,000 containers of regular crunchy peanut butter, how many containers of new extra crunchy peanut butter would it produce? So let's find a ratio of regular crunchy to extra crunchy. So regular crunchy to extra crunchy. There's regular crunchy to total. Let's see, regular crunchy to extra crunchy is four to five. So let's do four to five. And we wanna make it equal to if we have a company having 2,000 regular crunchy. So regular crunchy was on top. And we wanna know what the denominator is going to be. So this, we don't know, but we can figure it out. So how do, how do we get from four to 2,000? Just like creating equivalent fractions like we learned in fifth grade. So four times 500 is 2,000. So to get our denominator here, we're gonna multiply by 500 and five times 500 is 2,000 500. So our extra crunchy would be 2,500 extra crunchy. Containers. E. If the company decides to produce 10,000 containers of new extra crunchy peanut butter, how many containers of regular crunchy peanut butter would it produce? So we can use the same fraction ratio, four fifths. So remember the four is regular crunchy, 
and the five is extra crunchy. And we know that we're gonna have 10,000 extra crunchy. So this time 10,000 is gonna go on the bottom because that's extra crunchy. This is regular crunchy. So five times what gets us 10,000? Five times 2,000, I'm gonna do four times 2,000 is 8,000. So we're gonna have 8,000 regular crunchy containers. F, if the company decides to only produce 3,000 containers of new extra crunchy peanut butter, how many containers of regular crunchy peanut butter will it produce? So we have four fifths. This is regular crunchy, this is extra crunchy. Just so we can keep them straight. And we want it to be equal to, we have 3,000 containers of extra crunchy. So extra crunchy is on the bottom. Now we need to multiply. So what times five gets us 3,000? Five times, that'll be 600 is 3,000. Or we can do 600, so this would be 2,400. So we would need 2,400 regular crunchy containers. So if you're more comfortable with doing the tape diagram method, just stick with that. But if this equivalent fraction method works for you, then keep going.